So today we'll be taking a look at Becky Lynch's canceled returns, Miro's shots, some new information on the WWE hacker, and more. Let's start things off with this new information on the hacker. So it's been well over a year since the hacker first appeared on SmackDown. It was one of our favorite things to discuss and talk about because there was so much potential with this character. It opened up a new way for WWE to present information about a storyline, and the hacker was just an extremely overpowered character, and when you really think about it, we saw their room and thousands of monitors and screens, basically keeping an eye on the entire roster, all at the same time. So it was believable for this character to know the deepest, darkest secrets about pretty much everyone on the roster. Even though the character never went anywhere, the build-up in the actual teaser that we did get was pretty exciting. Their logo would randomly appear throughout SmackDown. We would see flashes of the truth will be heard message and other things like that. The hacker's goal was to expose those frauds in the locker room that were being dishonest or holding a big secret from their friends. The first and only target ended up being Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. After a lot of things mysteriously started to go wrong for Otis and Mandy, everyone got suspicious that something was going on. That's when the hacker made his first appearance to expose Sonya Deville and what she had been doing behind Mandy's back to sabotage everything with Otis. WWE easily could have done a boring reveal of a superstar presenting the backstage camera footage, but this reveal of having the hacker do it was quite unique and special. We all thought that the hacker would be going after other targets. They even took over an old official WWE Twitter account and started posting teasers about their next target there as well. But as we know, the character was dropped and didn't do a single thing after Mandy Rose and Sony Deville. Months later came the absolute flat and anticlimactic reveal by Ali that he was the hacker all those months ago. That was an awful reveal that was just meant to tie up those loose ends, nothing more. But one of those superstars who was close to the storyline at the time was Tucker. Tucker recently spoke with WrestleTalk and was asked about the hacker. He had this to say on what was told to him. I don't know who the hacker was supposed to be. That wasn't really part of our story until it became part of our story. And it was like, hey, this is how we're going to present this information. Don't worry about whatever, basically. This is how it's going to be presented, and this is how it works for you guys. And outside of that, you don't really need to worry about it. So it looks like everyone involved in the story was intrigued and wanted to know more about the hacker. But WWE's explanation and attitude was to not worry about it, because it's just not how they were going to present information. So was that really the only revealed plan for the hacker? Did WWE not have any plans for him past the Mandy and Sonya story? Well, that's the thing. It definitely appeared like there was more story on the way. The hacker even had a teaser that focused on multiple tag teams and implied that there was some liars amongst the tag team divisions as well. They even aired his other teaser at Money in the Bank event last year, so it seemed like bigger things were in fact on the way. So maybe that's why they told the other superstars not to worry about it because they had bigger separate plans for the character. But obviously the character was sadly dropped and it's unfortunate because there was just so much potential there. The pandemic era, more specifically the Performance Center era, was a dark time for WWE. But there were some bright spots such as The Hacker, Retribution, and The Fiend and Alexa Bliss. All great stories where they were first introduced, but they all had extremely disappointing endings to say the least. But it was still nice to see that insight from Tucker on what was going on at the time. Becky Lynch's return gets cancelled several times. That's what seems to be going on here according to these reports. It's being reported that Becky's return was discussed and cancelled a few times already. And the idea of Becky Lynch returning at WrestleMania was even teased by Becky herself, but was in fact part of the discussion for WrestleMania plans. Instead of the Bella Twins interrupting Bailey and throwing her down the ramp, it sounds like they were at least discussing the possibility of having Becky Lynch in that same spot. It would have been Becky Lynch interrupting Bailey. That would have been a huge moment. But in a way, it's a good thing that it didn't happen because of a few reasons. Yeah, you have live fans at WrestleMania, but they weren't sticking around for Raw and SmackDown. So Becky Lynch still would have been making her television return in front of an empty arena at the Thunderdome, which is of course not what you want. 
It's not what Becky really deserves. Becky deserves to return with the live crowd in attendance and just have this major return. It was also reported that Becky Lynch was backstage at Hell in a Cell. Now, that doesn't really hold much significance. She could have easily just been visiting or there to support Seth Rollins. But Becky has also been seen a lot at the Performance Center lately, so that's also another good sign that she's nearing a return. So in a way, it's a great thing that they didn't jump ahead and rush her return just for a WrestleMania moment. Just take your time and come up with something big for her return. Have a story already in place, because the one thing you don't want to do is bring Becky back and not have a clear path and story for her to follow. Maybe similar to Edge. Edge has had two returns this year, and they already had a story ready for him with both of his 2021 returns. So hopefully something will already be set for Becky Lynch when she returns. Raw or SmackDown? We still don't know, but it looks like SmackDown may need her more. We've seen Liv Morgan vs. Carmella for a whole month straight on SmackDown, and Bayley vs. Bianca Belair is also continuing despite Bianca defeating Bayley several times. But there's no one else for Bianca to face, so you really don't have any other choice but to continue their feud. But at the same time, Sasha Banks will be returning here in the coming weeks, so does Sasha's return sort of push Becky to Raw? That's what we'll have to wait and see. The world title picture are just very hard to predict sometimes because you have champions like Roman Reigns, who has a lot of one-and-done title defenses with superstars. But when it comes to the Raw and SmackDown women's titles, the loser keeps getting infinite rematches, so it's hard to tell what's going to happen there and where Becky Lynch can fit into. But when it comes to Becky's return, it does seem like it'll happen sometime this summer, there seems to be a lot of returns happening this summer, so it should be a big summer for sure. Andrade recently debuted in AEW and is coming right after Miro's TNT title. The two of them have been making a lot of jokes and references to their matches together in WWE lately, but Miro got a viral tweet when he dissed Andrade with a subliminal shot towards Charlotte Flair. Andrade had a quote saying how he deserves a shot at the TNT title and the AEW world title. Miro had this to say in response to him, this guy must think getting undeserved title shots runs in the family. Everyone understood that reference, but just in case you didn't, he's referring to Charlotte. Charlotte Flair has a reputation of getting infinite title opportunities. So since Charlotte and Andrade are a couple, he's saying that Andrade must think that the undeserved title opportunities applies to him as well. So that tweet by Miro went viral and sparked some mixed reaction from the fans. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.